Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Irene's DIY Addiction and today I'm going to be making a room for this sweet baby. I've restored her recently and she needs a room for her final presentation. And I want to make it really quickly because I've been making this restoration video forever and I want to finish it so desperately. So this girl, her name is Elena, uh, is from the Soviet Union from the 40s or the 50s, I believe. And my inspiration and my main goal for this room is to make uh, the room from the Soviet era kind of vibe. My inspo is something like this. <laughs> So I'll put a bed and a cupboard or a bookcase and maybe a table there and lots of toys since this is gonna be a child's room. First things first, every bedroom needs a bed and I was lucky to find this vintage doll bed at our local flea market. It looks really authentic and I especially love those ball toppers. It's a little bit big for the baby I have, but I think that's fine because uh, this could be an adult bed used by a little girl. I'll make bed linens for it and I'll also need a bed spread to cover the bed. I'm using vintage cotton fabric to make the linens as it's really soft and drapes nicely. I've made a bed sheet. Two pillowcases. and a duvet cover and I have made a diamond cutout in the duvet cover. It may look like an oddity to you as we don't usually have them now in our linens and my followers from the US don't normally use duvet covers at all. But this type of duvet cover with a diamond cutout was super common in the Soviet Union. I've also made a duvet out of red satin. It looked too bright and too new, so I've distressed it a little with instant coffee and some ironing to make nice creases. Let's make the little cozy bed. Well, now the bed is finished and it looks so cute! I have also ordered a knitted vintage napkin to use as a bed spread. It is still on its way. Hopefully it will come in time. And before I'll make uh, the bed finally, right before furnishing the whole room. Uh, the bed linens I made are not historically accurate, to be honest, because they used uh, natural cotton for bedding the duvet and they used all natural fabrics and I have synthetic satin and synthetic batten for it. But since this duvet will not be visible after the bed is finally made, I think this is totally fine. And I'll also hang this little tapestry behind the bed. This is also a super common feature of uh, Soviet interiors. Most of the bed of that times had either a carpet or a tapestry hanging behind it. And I also had a very similar tapestry hanging uh, near my bed when I was a small girl. Next, I'm going to make a bookcase. A couple of months ago, I bought an antique wall clock body, which I have shown to you already in my thrift haul video. And uh, this body has a really nice glass front and I'm going to shorten it a little bit to make the cabinet look more proportional and add some shelves to make it look like a real bookcase. Since I don't want to damage the glass, it will be nearly impossible to replace if broken. I'm using a hand saw to cut the excess. It took quite a while to finish, but I love how the finished front looks. After shortening the door, I'm also adjusting the body. 
The good news is I'll also get rid of those cutouts on the sides. Does anyone know what they were for in the clocks? Maybe they were to hear the clock striking better? And yeah, I'm not so good with operating a handsaw, obviously. I still have tiny cuts left on the sides, so I'm gluing little pieces of wood to hide them. And after that I'm gluing back the bottom. It has little grooves and the pieces I have glued into the sides have little tongues, so everything is connecting nicely. So now I have the perfect shorter cabinet with this beautiful glass front. And now what I need to do is to make little shelves inside the cabinet uh, as I'm going to make uh, the bookcase. And also I want to make this bookcase taller as it is a little bit small for most of my dolls. Uh, I've searched through the web and looks like many antique bookcases I have a closed part uh, on the bottom with drawers and so I bought those little wooden embellishments I'm not sure what they used to be but their color fits perfect uh, this cabinet so I even won't have to repaint them and I'm gonna make uh, drawer fronts out of those little slats and I'll adjust the bottom part to fit the drawers So I've assembled three drawers out of thin slats and I've made the bottom part using leftover piece of lumber. Gary made half lap joints for the parts with a router for me. I assembled the bottom part and I realized I didn't like it. It didn't look real with that part. So I made another base, glued it onto the bottom and attached a vintage wooden embellishment onto the front. I want the sides of this bottom part to look kind of nicer, so I'll cover them with wooden veneers. This is such a simple step, but it really makes the difference. That I'm gluing on the trim. This one fits nicely the existing trim on the top of the clock body. I've finished making the bottom part of the bookcase and now I need to stain all of this to fit the main body and also I have the shelves which I made out of thin wooden slats and I also want to stain them the same color as uh, the overall uh, bookcase and I'm not sure which color will suit the best. I have here Verathon ebony color and also a Liberon water stain in palisander color. So I'm going to kind of mix the two because the hue of the bookcase is a little bit reddish and very dark. So I'm not sure which one will suit the best. I'm staining all the added parts and actually the palisander wood stain works great. I'll just need a couple more layers for the color to be kind of deeper. I'm also staining all the shelves and after they're dry I'm installing them into the bookcase. And all that is left is to install the door back.
So now the bookcase is completed and I love how it turned out. Uh, it looks kind of earlier than an item from the 40s, but I think that's fine because I think in the 40s a lot of people still used old furniture which they had inherited from their parents. Actually, there's a lot of people still using such furniture now because it is beautifully made and it is made to last. And I'm so happy I've decided to make uh, this decorative bottom and not the part with drawers as I first intended to do. I think this carved part goes so nicely with the main body and it is actually looking like a real bookcase, which is what I was trying to recreate. Any bookcase needs the books, of course. First, I thought about making faux books for this bookcase myself, but this would take forever to finish. And also somehow I thought, uh, I felt like I wanted these books to be real so that you could actually read them. And uh, I went to our local virtual flea market and there, there I came across a very nice series of miniature books, which used to be sold with Build Your Own Victorian House uh, collection of the Agostini magazines. I'm not sure if this practice exists in the US, but a couple of years ago it was really popular in Europe. This company uh, sells magazines uh, and each issue of a magazine contains an item which is a little figurine, for example, or a part of a bigger model. And so by buying each issue of this collection, you're gradually building your own collection of those items. And one of the popular collection of that company several years ago here was the project of creating your own Victorian doll house. You could buy an empty house in miniature and then each magazine issue offered a new piece of furniture or some items to decorate your Victorian house. Uh, it was super popular, but after that, some years have passed and now people are trying to declutter. So these books, uh, which were the part of their collection, are, are being sold super cheap online and therefore I bought the whole bunch of them. Uh, what I love the most of these books is that they are real. You can actually read them, which is very cute, I think. But I also wanted some children's books because a little girl like Elena wouldn't read classics like Shakespeare, right? And I was lucky to come across a girl who makes miniature books for doll houses or doll room boxes. I, I sent her PDF files of the books which I liked and she made those adorable miniature books for me. They are also real so you can read them. Uh, and they are super cute. I especially love this ABC book, I think, which has many pictures. And look at this book. It even has fabric cover, just uh, like a real one. And I thought that just like me, when I was a little girl, I had books from the 70s or even from the 50s. Like this, Elena could have some older books. So my books are from 1903 and 1912 and the like. Uh, and they look really worn because they have been read by many children.
this girl even made two coloring books for me. And this gave me the plot for the story of Elena in the end. Uh, I was thinking a lot about what I could do with her. As you know, I'm making stop motion videos in the very end, but Elena is not an articulated doll and therefore I couldn't recreate some natural looking movements. And when I saw those coloring books, I thought that I could make her color them and therefore I'll need coloring pencils. I've cut bamboo skewers into one inch pieces and I've sharpened them like pencils. And after that I've just painted them different colors. I think six colors is enough. Aren't they cute? And now we're in the most fun part of the project, that is filling the room with toys. And here I have the most exciting buys, which I want to show to you. First, this is a vintage tricycle. Uh, looks like it was pretty common to keep them in sides uh, in that time, so I'm going to put it into the room. Then I have some cutest little teddy bears. Uh, this one is very old, probably it is from the same epoch as the girl herself. And these two are new, but they are made of vintage fabrics. Then, of course, I'll need the dolls. And here I have the whole box full of miniature porcelain dolls and doll parts. Some of them need repair, like this one. So I'll use some of them. And also I have a couple of sets to assemble a tiny doll. So maybe I'll make them as well. I also have a travel set of chairs. Uh, this set is pretty small and I think it will fit the doll perfectly. And also I want to make some board games. Uh, what I did uh, was I printed out the labels of uh, some of antique uh, board games and I want to uh, cut out those labels and glue them onto small boxes to make faux board games. I also have ready-made sets for the dolls. These are building blocks, so I need to assemble and paint those sets. I've cut out the board games labels and I'm distressing them a little bit. And after that, I'm attaching the labels onto little vintage boxes. And I've also assembled and painted the building blocks and the ABC blocks. I'm using very calm and saturated hues here so that the sets look like vintage ones. We are fully finished, we have the bed and the bookcase and I also have uh, the table, which I haven't shown to you. But we have the problem, the bedspread, uh, the vintage napkin, which I ordered to use as a bedspread for this bed, is still uh, on the way, it still hasn't arrived. Uh, the delivery is being delayed and uh, I don't know, I can't wait any longer because uh, I need to upload the restoration video already, people are waiting and therefore I, I need to be creative and use something else uh, as a bedspread. I thought I could use just uh, some piece of fabric uh, as a bedspread. I found this one, I bought it to accompany the wallpaper fabric and I've shown it to you in the previous video about making the room. And so I think I'll just use it as a bedspread. Let's see how it turns out. 
it is unfinished yeah the size is fine uh, I don't have time for finishing the edges and I don't really want to do this because this fabric is uh, for another project I think I'll just tuck the edges so that they are not seen in the video and well I think it looks pretty fine so we will uh, make it like this I've started with installing the base which I had used in the previous video but here I had another setback the base ended up being too small for the furniture looks like this base is too small for the bed I wanted to place it across the room like this but obviously it's too short and I won't be able to hang the tapestry behind the bed as I was expected and if I place the bed like this along the longer wall I won't have space for installing the bookcase and the table and the rest so we'll never finish this video where can I get bigger walls? Gary suggested using cardboard and I've attached pin-striped craft paper to the cardboard to mimic the wallpaper. It's very roughly made, of course, but since I'll have the tapestry and the bookcase, there's not much of actual walls that will be visible, so I hope we'll be good with this. I'm using a piece of upholstery fabric as a carpet. The bed is still too big to sit across the table, so we've had to build the additional structure out of a stool and some boxes to hold it. I wonder if real movie guys ever do anything like this. <laughs> I'm hanging the tapestry. Next goes the bookcase. It's still a little short for the rest of the room. Yeah, I had problems with scaling this time but I hope it will still work for the video. I'm adding books and little porcelain figurines inside. I'll place a round table here. It's made of cardboard and veneers. Unfortunately, I occasionally removed all the files with the process of its creation. I'm covering it with an antique lace napkin and placing toys and books and other stuff here. Adding more toys around the room. Looks good! It's such a pity both the tricycle and the chess set ended up being too big for the room. Luckily I had a smaller, how would you call it, a horsicle? <laughs> a couple of more details and we're done for the final reveal. Well, it's been a tough project for us because of all that problems with scaling and because we were really short of time as I wanted to finish Elena's restoration video really quickly. But I love the result and I love how Elena's story turned out in the end of the restoration video. In case you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. Thanks for being here and we'll see you in my next one. Bye!